Let me tell you a story about Leeds. There's a Leeds United song. I heard it when I was a boy in Leeds. Over the river air is chilly and deep. All who wally never trust the Leeds police. All who wally. The river air runs right through the centre of Leeds. But what about that bit after, Olu Wally? Is that a nonsense rhyme? So many times I crossed the river and wonder what that song was about. I found out, and it's a strange, haunting story. Leeds exists because the Romans came and built a ford across the mostly chilly and deep river air. A handy crossing point from coast to coast at one of the narrowest bits of the island. In 1949, David Oluwole stowed away on a boat in Nigeria. He landed at Hull, was charged for being a stowaway, and transferred to Leeds to Army Jail. He decided to make Leeds his home. He found work in a foundry near the river. He cut quite a figure in the Leeds of the early 50s. Earned himself the nickname Yankee for his fancy American clothes. He liked to dance at the Mecca Ballroom. Oluwole lived at 209 Bellevue Road, round the corner from where I grew up in Burley and Hyde Park. I can't believe I never heard his story. From Bellevue Road, he had this view of his first home in Leeds, Armley Nick. The glamour of Oluwole's early years in Leeds came to a crashing end. He was arrested and sectioned. There was a mental asylum in a village called Menston, outside Leeds. From 1953 to 1961, David Oluwole was an inmate. He was drugged and given electroconvulsive therapy. When I was a kid, if you wanted to tell someone they were mad, you would say, you belong in Menston. You're a mena. It was not Yankee with his energy and cheer who was released in 1961. It was just David. There's a parallel life to David's in Leeds. South African Albert Johansson signed for Don Revy's Leeds United the same month David Oluwole was released from Menston. Albert Johansson was to become a major squad player in one of the best teams the English Football League has ever seen. He was the first black man to play in an FA Cup final. Leeds' tradition of African players now has a long and proud history and went on to include fans' favorite, Tony Yeboah, and my personal favorite, the chief, Lucas Radaby. Nelson Mandela once told Lucas Radaby, you are my hero. Praise higher than that, hard to come by. We are Leeds, we are Leeds, we are Leeds. We are Leeds, we are Leeds, we are Leeds. We are Leeds, we are Leeds, we are Leeds. We are Leeds. We are Leeds. We are Leeds. Another song. It lets us decide what it means to be Leeds. We are it. But what is it? Remember the song, Never Trust the Leeds Police, Oluwole. 
David Oluwole became homeless. Police constable Dave Stanton would catch him sleeping rough around town and encourage him to go to a hostel. They'd have a brief chat when Oluwole sat outside Holy Trinity on the bench. David sometimes had cause to trust Dave of Leeds Police. Moving pictures were invented in Leeds by a Frenchman who came to be a photographer in the city, Louis Le Prince. Some of the first moving pictures in the world are these frames of Leeds Bridge on the River Air in 1888. Leeds Bridge is also a major place in our tale. You can't tell the story of David Olawali without it. One of my favorite things in Leeds are the Victorian arcades. Olawali liked them too, to shelter in and sleep. In April 1968, Sergeant Kitching of the Leeds City Police arrested David Olawali for the first time. Soon, Kitching and another Leeds policeman, Inspector Geoffrey Ellica, made it their business to hound David Olawali night after night. Many other officers were complicit. They helped or turned a blind eye. They found him, arrested him, urinated on him, beat his head on the floor of the van, beat his face on the counter inside Milgarth Police Station, kicked his bollocks so hard he was lifted into the air. They made him take up a position for press-ups and then kicked his arms away so his face hit the ground. They called this doing penance. They would drive him out of town and leave him in the woods. Can you imagine being homeless and two authority figures hound you, torture you, drive you out to Middleton Woods and leave you there in the night? Can you begin to imagine being woken up with a kick, given for fun, night after night, because of the color of your skin. Sergeant Kitching said, I may have tickled him with my boot, kicked him gently, given him a good slap in. He's not human, he's a wild animal. Asked in what places he had assaulted Olawali, Sergeant Kitching cheerfully recounted, Underleeds Library in Commercial Street, in the dark doorway next to Wine Lodge in Bond Street, Bakers in Trinity Street, Brills in Bond Street, John Peters in Lands Lane, Bridal House in the Hedrow, Empire Arcade in Brigate, and Trinity Church in Boar Lane. Lots of the people of Leeds were nice to David Olawali, that policeman, Dave Stanton. Plenty of shopkeepers didn't mind David sleeping in their doorways. Some would exchange a few kind words with him. He's said to have left uncomplainingly and even saluted some of them to give thanks for his place of rest. Two Leeds police officers resigned on the same day in 1969, a husband and wife. The ill treatment of David Olawali was one of the main reasons they did it. Never trust the Leeds police. On the 11th of March, 1969, Olawali was booked. On his charge sheet, his nationality was written, WOG. In the early morning of the 18th of April, a bus conductor saw two policemen chasing a small limping man down this alley right by Leeds Bridge. It was to be the last time anyone else saw David Olawali alive. At the end of this alley, well, I imagine you know what's there. I'll give you a clue. It's chilly and it's deep. On the 28th of April, a point at Anfield crowned Leeds United League champions. 
In contrast to so many fans who begrudged the Whites their successes, the Reds showed what great football fans they are. They stayed in their thousands and chanted, champions, champions at the Leeds players. David Olawali drifted down the river air. The whole of the valley of the air around Leeds falls downhill, downstream to one spot, Nostrop. That's why Leeds' first sewage works were built there. How they must have laughed, Inspector Ellica and Sergeant Kitchen. You throw a piece of shit in the river and naturally it finds its way to Nostrop. Nostrum. What a place to end a story. But this story isn't over. David Oluwali was buried in Killingbeck Cemetery, unwept, unmissed, unsung by the fans of Leeds United. 1969 quietly moved along, and as Christmas approached, you can imagine Sergeant Kitching and Inspector Ellica being more and more relieved that nothing had come of it. They must have looked forward to a new decade more than others. Murder, manslaughter, whatever you want to call it, they had got away with it. Almost. But we haven't arrived in 1970 yet, and there's still drama to unfold. Inspector Ellica grew up in the Brudenells, so did I. It still has one of the oldest cinemas in the world, the Hyde Park Picture House. I've seen a couple of hundred films here. Ellica must have been here too. This is the center of my teenage years, Headingley High Street. There was an oak tree that stood here for more than a thousand years. It gave its name to the original oak, the pub where I bought my first pint of Tetley Bitter. Not many people know that the Skyrack pub across the road is named after the same tree. Skyrack is a corruption of Shire Oak. This is where I caught the bus to high school every day. After I moved to London, I'd go back here to catch up with old schoolmates. New Year's Eve in the original oak every time. All those years, I didn't know anything about it. But on this exact stretch of road, on New Year's Eve in 1969, a strange event took place that changed everything. This is where the whole thing started to unravel. I used to drink here and then use the crossing to get back home. Something similar happened to an old lady, Minnie Wine. A few too many, they said. Didn't use the crossing, they said. Bolted out. The policeman coming in his car had no chance to swerve or brake. And the dear old drunk lady sadly died. Not only was it a respectable policeman at the wheel, but as it happened, almost by magic, you might say, there was a policeman, an inspector, who saw the whole thing and swore to it. The family of the old lady and her friends were most surprised to hear about her drinking to excess because she had never had a drink in her life. The traffic police said that they didn't smell alcohol on her, but that they most certainly did on the policeman driver. Never trust the Leeds police. The traffic policemen stuck to their guns. The policeman driver smelled of booze. The old lady did not. Trust the Leeds police. Little by little, doubt crept into people's minds that maybe the inspector wasn't there at all. Maybe he was covering for his drunk colleague. Maybe he was telling porkies. Would you like to guess the name of that magic policeman? His name was Inspector Jeffrey 
Elica. The driver was convicted and Elica was tossed out of the police and sentenced to nine months in jail. Misconduct as an officer of justice was the charge, and boy, was it a fair cop. Once Elika was put in jail, perhaps the story of him hounding David Olawali became better known among Leeds police. Or perhaps it fell on just the right ears. Every story needs a hero. Perhaps at the very bottom of the pile of Leeds 1300 police officers, was the thin young cadet, Gary Galvin, Gaza. Underestimate him at your peril. Scrawny young Gaza left school at 15, later became a weightlifter and got a PhD in reforming young offenders. A PhD who left school at 15. He must have been some kind of man. Gary Stewart Galvin. He heard the stories about Elika and Kitching, chasing or throwing Olawali into the river air. In October 1970, he told his seniors about it. Elika was in jail and within a day, Sergeant Kitching was suspended from duty and a Scotland Yard investigation began. Of the 1,300 Leeds police officers, at dawn on the last day, David Olawali was sighted being chased towards the river. 1,298 were convincingly able to place themselves. Two were not. Kitching and Elica. Charges of ABH, GBH and manslaughter were brought against Elica and Kitching. Scotland Yard put pressure on Leeds police and officers stepped forward and gave witness to the hounding of David Olawali. Elika and Kitching were found guilty and were sentenced to three years and two years respectively. By your wicked misbehavior to a colored vagrant, you bring disgrace and shame on the whole of the police force of this country, Judge Hinchcliffe said in his summing up. The Leeds Assizes could not bring a charge of murder, but for Leeds United's fans, they were guilty. Never trust the Leeds police. They sang their song. Leeds United and the FA have done so much great work to change attitudes. It was a dark era on the terraces. And let's just say there weren't many songs about mistreatment of Nigerian immigrants in Leeds or anywhere else. The heroism of Gaza, telling the truth and facing the consequences stands out. His son, Carl Galvin, is a police officer in the West Yorkshire Police. He keeps his dad's scrapbook. What a family treasure that is. And where do you go from here, Gary? At home. <laughs> Thank you. Just as you can never step in the same river twice, so the city flows and changes. We are Leeds. We are Leeds. We all are Leeds.
Even our slogan of old has changed. Marching on together, somebody came from afar and added something to us. So we sometimes say, Marchando juntos. Marchando juntos. The Romans came and built a ford over the river air. That's why Leeds is. Now the river is crossed by so many bridges. The original act was to build, to cross. It made a meeting point to bring people together, to be united. All of this, all of this came from that. Outside of Leeds United Songs, the city now commemorates the once forgotten David Olawali. An organization, Remember Olawali, works to connect people to David's story. It's a story we should know and commemorate together. This is my version of it. We are Leeds. Leeds. United. <laughs>